required in international law because you can only say that you have um, uh, aligned with that if you have actually done uh, specific um, studies that that actually assist uh, you know in in um, determining that process so now again again we say th there was a biased consultation of certain pro bill advocates and we have highlighted this issue uh, several times that uh, there was consultation but it was very specific to those who um, had views that actually were in support of the bill, very intentionally excluding those that um, do not have those kinds of, of, of um, views, which we think is biased and it's not correct. And um, thirdly, that um, the fact that the bills were referred by, back by the president is, is no mean issue. It's a serious issue. It's an issue that um, should really um, make everyone, and including a parliament, really want to seriously engage in the issues because uh, it's, it's an uncommon um, issue um, and uh, it invokes a constitutional process. And I know that the fact that we are here today is as a result of agreeing with there are certain fundamental issues that were raised relating to, you know, the issues around constitutionality and uh, and uh, so we say that by and large, what has been done through all the panel beating approach used to respond to the issues to try and salvage uh, this locomotive that failed a car, a, a, a car crash test, a robust uh, uh, original legislation that will be able to address the issues. Now, when we talk about uh, looking at the fact that in its constructed system, office rights system, not a user's rights system, this we find it uh, referred to, you know, encouraging uh, uh, protection for, you know, um, that particular legislation. It was then reflected in international copyright treaties, which are still applicable. Recognized copyright as an author's right system. This was confirmed in the Canadian case, fundamentally seeks to protect the dry detail, which is the author's right. Then we, 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 we see this also in Article 1 of the Bank Convention for the protection of the rights of authors in their literary and artistic works, carried over into other treaties. However, um, at least from the 1990s, a narrative began to develop that started challenging copyright as an author's rights system, whereby it was then postulated that it in fact, uh, this is not uh, just an author's rights system, system. And uh, um, this then has led to a very strong, call an expansive regime of open ended exceptions, limitations in copyright. Because if you say that this is as much a user's right, it is saying that you can then impose within the system open-ended exceptions. So exceptions that no no ironic, ironic because we're talking about limitations. Conform to the three-step test that is required international law whenever uh, uh, the exceptions and limitations are to be introduced. In a Canadian case um, in, in 2004, uh, where they you know made reference to copyright exceptions being a user's right. But as I said, it's just um, one odd. It's because our own constitution joins our cause so never interpreting the Bill of Rights, which, which includes the rights of um, authors, copyright, which is a, in essence a, a property right, a law. They may consider that for a law, but they might International law. Section 233 then uh, clearly indicates it prefer any reason uh, 
And uh, then talking about that, let's look clearly now at the international law position because the constitution says the courts must apply international rights. The international law position that copyright is an exclusive right and may only be interfered with by obtaining prior authorization from the copyright or through a system of exceptions and limitations. But that has to conform to so-called three-step test, which means that it must only be done in certain special cases. Exceptions such as you are not without any limitation. Um, and in this case, the, the three-step three test says in certain special cases, that do not conflict with the normal exploitation of the work. An alternative interpretation of constitutional law, which is inconsistent with international law, uh, as, 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 as we saw in Section 233, is one that says that interpretation uh, matters because the international uh, system is a system. Let's look at the foreign opposition, which the, court, the, the, the Constitution says the courts may consider. They don't have to. And in this regard, we find the USA, it's a foreign law policy or system that the courts may consider don't have to. And then I mentioned the case our courts were engaged with them, looking at the issue of fair dealing. And this is what sides referred me to decisions and writings from several foreign jurisdictions on the meaning of the phrase fair dealing. I understand that foreign authorities are referred to for guidance of foreign law because its jurisdiction has its own particular history and in many cases is bound or influenced by domestic such as I therefore intend for historical reasons to focus on issues authority. That was the reason for, for historical um, legal precedent that the court felt that it was better more and more proper to rely on um, you know, English authority rather than a foreign does not to our history values for a period of over 200 years with a very complex jurisdiction uh, that you know would uh, require our court to really um, go through a lot of trouble in trying to make sense of the parliament itself has said consultation is very important. It has to facilitate public participation. And it says in all aspects of the bill. Just of a bill and see how does it impact the, the industry that in the, 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 new, the Minister of Health case. And it went further to say that um, such consultation must ensure that a reasonable opportunity is offered to members of the public. When in the Doctors of, for Life case, the, the, the court there highlighted the importance of the consultation process. For There, that the laws have to be effective in practice rather than just uh, you know being theoretically so 
We're saying without a proper consultation with stakeholders, as compliant process, the resulted legislation will be defective and cannot be said to have met the exceptions and the limitations. Now, on the social economic impact, impact assessment system, this is a system introduced by government itself, 2015, to replace the regulatory impact system. Its aims are to ensure that the policy is on the right track back requiring evaluation of eval alternative approaches to help drafters avoid finalizing an inappropriate solution because they move too quickly to, to select a strategy to facilitate a brainstorm of the issues involved in the problem and the full range of alternatives to deal with them. It entails identifying the problem, the affected groups, and how they are affected. And in this way, it gives effect to the three-step test requirement in international law. But this was not done in the current process. Now, let's go to Blind SA, which is a very important decision. Uh, the, 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 the decision has actually provided us with a preview of how the Constitutional Court or the courts are likely to treat the current bills if they are presented to, to that court, if a, if a constitutional challenge is mounted. Importantly, the, the judgment has highlighted the fact that the court shuns a hostile users' rights aligned view on copyright. That's that's what the court highlighted there because the court the court was very clear that you know it 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 it, it, it wanted to provide an effective interim relief to blind SA in a way that in such a way that as to respect the rights of copyright owners. That was clear in paragraph 105 of that judgment. The court furthermore took an approach that views exceptions and limitations as targeted relief. The court, the court called exceptions and limitations targeted relief. The court said that this is it's such, that is in, 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 in explaining what that means. They said it is such a relief as must be formulated to protect the rights of copyright owners. Again, in paragraph 107, that's what the court said. It says targeted relief. The court was careful to ensure that the exceptions and limitations regime should not prejudice the legitimate interests of rights holders. In other words, the court ensured a three-step approach to you know, its, its decision. Furthermore, the court, court was careful to ensure that the relief granted to blind SA aligns with the dictates of the Marrakesh Treaty and struck out the expansive provisions in, the, in that bill that, that uh, you know, are not provided for in the Marrakesh Treaty. Now, targeted relief to me means that it's relief that um, aims at specific cases, aligns with the three-step test that says only in special cases. It is a, a, an approach that is very much alien to the fair use approach that is uh, free for all, that uh, has, provides for open-ended exceptions that do not mention specific cases. The common court said targeted relief. And that is important in determining this issue to, to consider that. And the other thing, what we had highlighted, you have to align with what the Marrakesh Treaty says in terms of the protections that must be provided. The court confirmed that position. Um, so this is very much important. And uh, we say the fact that relief that is sought must reference, they, they, they said here in the bill, it says, you know, um, the, 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 the exception applies to all works. They say, no, Marrakesh says it is limited to literal works. So you must limit it to literal works. And uh, it cannot be, you cannot refer to persons with disability. You have to say, you know, uh, persons with visual and print disabilities. That's what Marrakesh provides for. And then they say, you must define beneficiary persons so that it's clear what that means. That is in line with Marrakesh. That is the approach of the constitutional court in, in this matter. And then uh, we're saying there are a lot of other issues that we can talk about. We, I, I was clear from the beginning that we did not aim to, to mention or refer to specific cases, but just the principles. Others, including those that just came now, have highlighted specific areas. And I think you're in a difficult position because you have had all these people coming and uh, mentioning a lot of things, but uh, the, 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 the issue is how do you then navigate all those? That is why we say it's important to go back to the drawing board in the sense of ensuring alignment with the three-step test. We cannot have a one-size-fits-all approach because you are dealing with different industries. You may have had some mentioning certain things that to them are important, which may not be important to others. The, the best approach is, and that is even in the US, if you look at their legislation, they're very specific in terms of uh, you know, the, the specific sectors and say, 
how would you approach it with respect to the music sector? How would you approach this in respect of the film sector? How would you approach this in respect of the literary rights sector? And how would you deal with the unique circumstances of vulnerable communities in terms of giving the, the exceptions? And we say, this is a, 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 the better approach. And to be able to do that, you must do an impact assessment study that looks into all those areas. There are some that had said that, well, Marrakesh says that you can extend these uh, exceptions to, 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 to beyond what Marrakesh says is true. I'm referring now to Article 11 of the Marrakesh, um, uh, the Marrakesh uh, 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 Treaty. And uh, that treaty, of course, does say that, you know, you, 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 but it says you, in adopting these measures, you must make sure that you align with Article 9.2 of Ben Convention, three-step test, Article 13 of TRIPS agreement, three-step test. Um, Article 10.1 of WIPO copyright treaty, three-step test. Article 10.2 of the WIPO copyright treaty, three-step test. And then Article 12 says you could go beyond, you may implement in your law other copyright limitations and exceptions for the benefit of beneficiary persons than are provided by this treaty. However, you must do this having regard to the contracting party's economic situation, its social and cultural needs, and in conformity with that contracting party's international rights and obligations, which brings us to the three-step test in international law. I'll pause here and hand over to my colleague to present the summary part. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Valoui. So who's, uh, who's coming on board now? It's me, Jefferson. Doc, okay. I just need to stop sharing. All right, I'll, I, I need to stop sharing. Um, just, just a moment. Um, um. Uh, okay. Is it possible for, 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 for someone to stop the sharing? I'm, I'm finding it difficult here. Enrico, can you come to the rescue, Mr. Valoi? What was that happening, Jefferson, in the interest of time? I just want to introduce myself. My name is Chola Makhamate. Uh, I wear two hats. One is the chairperson of the Copyright Coalition, and thanks to Dr. Valoi for making that presentation on our behalf. And my second hat is as the general manager for legal services at the Southern African Music Rights Organization, known as, as SAMRO. So um, I think bef before I, I present, just uh, some, some issues in principle. I uh, want to state that uh, Samuel and the coalition do support the objectives of um, amending the Copyright um, uh, Act. It is an old piece of legislation, um, as one presenter uh, previously highlighted, um, that needs to be brought into um, this decade, this century. Can you see my presentation, Chairperson and members? Yes, yes, we can see your presentation. Okay. Um, and, and we do support the amendment of the, of the Copyright Act. It's necessary to bring it into um, what is happening in line with, with copyright use and copyright con uh, consumption of content um, and everything else that is happening within the creative industries um, space. We obviously, as SAMRO, operate within uh, the music industry specifically. So we do support the amendment of, of the, the act, but we do caution, however, that in amending the act, you produce legislation that is fit for purpose and actually will not have unintended consequences that will cause harm vis-a-vis uh, -vis the good that you intend to, to bring to uh, organizations like SAMRO and its members and also the creative industries as, as a whole. Um, another thing to mention, Chair, because I realized that in, in bringing us to this process, which has taken 14 years, uh, as one of the presenters highlighted, the trigger was um, the Farland Commission and, and dealing with issues around the regulations of CMOs, which SAMRO is, uh, and some of the issues that uh, artists were, were complaining about uh, in particular at the time. And I think I want to reiterate as a CMO, as SAMRO, that we do support the regulation of CMOs. Um, and again, reiterating that the drafting of such regulations should be proper um, and, and, and should be done in a manner that does not cause again harm um, instead of the intended good. So we do support the regulation of CMOs in that regard. SAMRO is an, a CMO that administers performing rights for composers and authors. So from a practical perspective, SAMRO deals with the administrative, uh, the administration of copyright on a day-to-day -day basis. It is our work. Our job really is to step into the shoes of composers, authors, and publishers and act in their best interest from a perspective of ensuring that we collect uh, licensing fees on their behalf and then pay over royalties to 
to our members. We represent the interests of approximately 136,000 composers, publishers, and authors across South Africa. So we don't have a small number of members. We've actually got a large number of members across the country and also across the world through bilateral uh, um, agreements with other sister organizations across the world in Europe, um, Australia, the States. Um, so we have a fairly large footprint from that perspective, both locally and internationally in terms of our bilateral agreements. Now, I want to, to state here that we fully support the, the presentations that have been made previously, in particular by the South African Institute of Intellectual Property lawyers and also um, uh, luminaries like and, Dean. and our presentation is not going to be an exposition necessarily of the law, but just give you a window into how the bills as they're currently drafted are going to impact not just as an, as an organization, but our members uh, who are beneficiaries of the work that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Our stakeholders, Chairperson, are twofold, primarily. We, as I've indicated, represent composers and authors. And on the other hand, we license users um, who include broadcasters, schools, municipalities, malls, restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. We ensure that license fees are paid in terms of the Copyright Act by these users so that we can then pay over royalties and distribute royalties to our members. This is, is, in terms of what's been happening with the bill, just to bring this to your attention, is that because of the way the bills are, are, are currently drafted, they are pro proving to be problematic to us from a day-to-day -day basis in that our users are now seeing the opportunity to refuse to comply with the Copyright Act as it stands because they are seeing a situation where it's now tilting quite in favor of users' rights vis-a-vis -vis composers or creators' rights. And that's really posing from already um, a challenge to us in terms of how we run our business. In terms of the rules of engagement with these stakeholders, currently it's quite clear. We have in our law fair dealing. Everybody understands what the rules of the game are. We understand, the users understand that they need to take out a license in order to use our members' repertoire and they need to pay a license fee. And they understand in which circumstances they can claim that they don't need to pay a license fee um, in order to use our members' works. I just want to state, uh, Chairperson, that Samra is not opposed to exceptions. Exceptions are part and parcel of the copyright system. I think the issue that we have here is that the exceptions that are being introduced in the bill are overly broad. So what will happen is that the playing field will not be clear. We understand with fair dealing currently what we can and cannot do, what we cannot cannot enforce with users with regards to compliance, and they also understand, and it's then easier to enforce compliance. What will happen with the fair use, in particular the fair use principle when it's introduced, is that the phrasing of the word such as opens up the field so widely that users and users will be able to use that as a defense in terms of using our members' works without getting permission or paying um, royalties or, or license fee, which then converts into royalties and payment to our users because they will have this defense. Um, and it will require us uh, to take them to court in order to determine what, uh, if there has been comp copyright infringement um, on their part. So it really does open up the field widely um, in, uh, in terms of what we can and cannot do going forward from a compliance perspective with regards to copyright legislation. Yes, the legislation needs to change, but what we have currently, and I think this has been um, reiterated by several speakers, is legal certainty. We know what the rules of the game are, whereas going forward, should this, be, this bill be passed in its current form, we won't know what the rules of the game are. We're also very concerned about this one size fits all approach um, that has been taken with regards to um, the creative industries in particular and the copyrights amendment act. I think I mentioned earlier that the genesis of this was the Farlem Commission and the focus in particularly on the music sector. And that has now translated to um, the rules of the game, quote unquote, for the music sector being applied across the board to other sectors within the creative industries. And that should not be the case because music is impacted differently in terms of copyright, um, uh, differently to the AV sector. It's uh, the book publishing sector, book writing sector is impacted differently. Animation is impacted differently. Software is impacted differently. So all these other sectors in the creative industries are impacted differently by the provisions of the Copyright Amendment Act, but there seems to be, there seems to have been a knee-jerk reaction to what was happening within the music industry and therefore the rules there have been applied um, to the other industries. And if you look, use the analogy of sports, you would not use the rules for cricket 
and apply them to soccer or netball or hockey. You would use the rules for those particular sports um, and, and apply them accordingly. But what this act does, it, it, or the bill does, is that it takes the rules for cricket and then takes them to, 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 to hockey or to soccer or to netball, whatever the case may be, which creates immense confusion. Um, and then those industries are unable to operate or will be unable to operate in a manner that is efficient. And then that will have downstream effects on um, the various value chains within those different industries. Just in terms of fair use, Chairperson, um, I say it's tight amount of free use purely because um, the rules of the game will not be clear. Um, users will be able to use works, uh, in particular for SAMRO members, without having to, to pay um, a license fee. Therefore, downstream, our members will not derive the benefit of that use in terms of uh, remuneration. Um, it will also diminish the value of, of works, particularly South African uh, works. You might as well just put a sign um, to, to users both here and internationally that says open for business, come and take uh, what you need. Um, and um, if somebody challenges you, use the deep pockets that you have to ensure that you drag them through the court system. That's essentially uh, what will happen. I mean, the, the other analogy is, imagine if you go to a soccer game um, and we all know what the rules are. We all know when there's a foul. We all know when there's a penalty. And the referee is very clear about when that's supposed to happen. But then you come and introduce something which you have uh, basically transplanted from a foreign legislation. And you go to the soccer game and nobody knows when there's a foul. Nobody knows when there's a penalty. And in order to determine that, you need to go to the, to the courts to make a determination um, about what that happens. That will stifle um, 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 the, uh, the creative industries. That will stifle an organization like SAMRO. We won't be able to act in the best interest of our members and they won't be able to get the remuneration that um, they need to get. Um, another issue is that there are no, whereas with the US legislation, um, they have punitive damages in, in the event that somebody does win an infringement case, but this has not been imported in our law. And I think you've asked the question with regards to fair use. It is an important, I mean, an important um, um, doctrine from the US, but I think what our legislators have done, which is, is our, our drafters have done, which is quite dangerous, is that they've gone even further. They've, they've supercharged um, what fair use is and are trying to import that um, into our into our legislation. So you'll have this supercharged fair use. You have a situation where people don't know what the rules of the game are. You have a situation where creatives will not be able to derive the benefit um, of, 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 of the creation of their works. They won't be able to make money. Um, simply put, they won't be able to do things like put, put food on the table. And, and the, one of the objectives that, um, one of the things that the, the a bill was meant to deal with was the issue of artists dying pauper, um, paupers. I'm afraid, Chairperson, with the way the bill is currently drafted, that is going to continue and will actually become a lot worse. It won't fix the problem, it'll make it much worse because now you're placing the onus on a lot of predominantly black um, creatives to go to court and prove that there's been an infringement. Um, I don't know how many people have the funds um, to actually do that. And that's where also organizations like SAMRO do step in because we do step into the shoes of our members and are able um, to, to litigate on matters. But even then, we don't have an endless litigation budget. And at some point, we'll have to pick and choose our battles. But what will eventually end up happening is that the value um, of South African creative content will be diminished because uh, nobody will feel the need to, to pay what is required in order to remunerate um, our creators. Like I said, I'm not going to go um, into details about um, the specific provisions, um, but I have um, mentioned them briefly here in my presentation. We did make a, a detailed presentation um, to, the, to the committee and submitted it to the Secretariat, which does provide a lot more detail in terms of Samuel's position. Um, um, but what we want to say in conclusion, Chairperson, is the, the, the importance of a social economic impact assessment study cannot be underscored. It is critical um, in this process to determine how these provisions will impact the various uh, sectors in the creative industries. Music will be impacted differently. Audiovisual will be impacted uh, differently. Animation will be impacted differently. Books will be impacted differently. And you can't apply the same provisions across the board. It will create chaos. It will just create anarchy. Um, you know, South so Africa will become like some sort of Uber Eats of sorts where people will just log on and, and pick and choose what they wanted and pick the best deal for themselves that adequately remunerating um, those that need to be remunerated. So that is something that I implore um, the committee to do. Again, um, have a sector based approach, given the various uh, consequences to the sectors um, because of the different uh, impact on the different sectors and also base the drafting on proper IP policy. 
we've heard a lot of um, recommendations. We've heard a lot of assertions about what should and shouldn't be in the bills, but I've yet to hear what this has been based on. What IP policy in our country is this based on? We need to have an answer for that because otherwise, a lot of these recommendations are, are, are some of them on an emotional basis, some of them um, ego driven, some of them we don't know what the justification is, but we need to have in order to remove all of that, you need to have a, an objective um, standard against which you are applying and a proper IP policy and an impact assessment study would assist in going in that in going a long way and also um, utilize the advice given by the experts previously that were appointed by the um, Portfolio Committee in the National Assembly, they gave cogent advice, but in the drafts that have appeared since, we have not seen um, that coming through, and it still appears to very much a, a user-based uh, um, um, draft of the Copyright Amendment Bill. And just something that I've not put here, um, also, we implore you to look at the issues around piracy. Um, it is a, it's a huge issue, uh, particularly for our members. Their content is being exploited online um, on various different sites that pop up um, um, every day that come that have been controlled in, in jurisdictions across the world. And that's something that needs to be dealt with seriously, but is absent um, in the bills. And I implore you to look at that. Um, yeah, Chairperson, and, and I just want to thank you um, for this time that you've taken to listen to both myself um, and Dr. Baloy, and we hope that you take our input into consideration. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Makamate and uh, Dr. Baloy for taking uh, the committee through a very detailed and comprehensive uh, presentation, punctuated by metaphors <laughs> over, over, over the week <laughs> to illustrate the, the foundation uh, upon which the two bills are suspect were anchored. Uh, other than that, uh, let me check with the members as to, as to any uh, any uh, point that they want to raise, I guess they are they are quite uh, happy uh, with what we have presented. Uh, uh, the, <clears throat> I think the, 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 the point, the, the just one point that uh, uh, that has, I don't know. Uh, did, did, yeah, yeah, you correct me to say the bills was were equal driven or what? <laughs> no, I, I, I think, uh, Chairperson, I'm just being facetious. I think in instances where, because this is, it's fairly historic. Um, if you look yeah. at the history as well with this bill, it's been a fairly divisive bill with uh, <laughs> inputs coming from, from very pro and very anti uh, the bills. It's just, I was just being facetious in the sense that I think it, it is a <laughs> name process as well. So they might be <laughs> those motivations. <laughs> No, I think we, 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 got, we got the gist of, of, of what you're saying. Uh, I think the point is uh, definitely there is a need, there is a need uh, to, to uh, amend the law, but I think, uh, I think key, 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 key to the issues that you are raising is uh, it's, it's the, the absence of policy, that's what I got from you, that uh, the intellectual property policy Preceding this bill, uh, it's an area that you that you have an issue with. Uh, the expert advice uh, uh, that was uh, commissioned. Uh, your view is that to a larger degree it was not considered. I think that's what I got from you. But also the issue of the one size fits all. Uh, uh, you are saying that the music, the uh, the impact, the the, 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 the bell will impact differently on uh, music, on software, uh, on, uh, on, on on number of areas uh, that you have uh, highlighted. Uh, <clears throat> but I think what would be quite critical for, 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 from our side is to, just to, to, to accept the fact that indeed you have helped us a lot in terms of, uh, particularly from, 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 from the, from the uh, Sambo site, uh, uh, there are a number of errors that we are raising, uh, but also the the uh, Dr. Baloy has also has also 
highlighted key areas that we need to take into account as we engage here with the, with this process. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, in uh, uh, going forward, we will definitely take into some of the issues that we have raised. It has helped us a, a great deal as a community to sort of uh, uh, get a sense uh, in terms of uh, of where you come from. Uh, I think the 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 the, the, the issue the issue of uh, the users uh, versus the author, uh, the the evolution of the law in terms of uh, 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 point of emphasis or the tempo. Whether 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 the, uh, the emphasis is on the so on the user's right or is it on the copyright owners? I think that's what Dr. Baloi right at the beginning indicated. Uh, <clears throat> but I think what is quite critical is the fact that uh, uh, there is a need that you have identified. But the biggest challenge that you are saying, uh, Mr. Mahmoud, is that uh, the Falam Commission was more on music, so we took those recommendations. To apply it across the board, I think that's the sense that one got. Yes, yes. But other than that, I think we are happy for 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 for, for, for the presentation that you have made. Allow me to take this opportunity on behalf of the of the select committee to to extend the word of gratitude to you, and uh, wish you a wonderful afternoon as we continue our discussion. And uh, uh, just to to the members uh, understand that. Uh, uh, we stick to the time and then leave. Uh, uh, I mean, agenda meeting uh, for lunch until uh, uh, ten past two, and then we'll kickstart at ten past two. Uh, because some of the presenters that we have uh, are from abroad, and therefore we cannot uh, temper with the uh, program as it is as, as uh, it was crafted in a manner that will take into account some of the. Audiences from abroad. Thank you, um, Ms. Makhamati. Just, just a prediction. Um, the second session yes. started two o'clock. Three. It started two o'clock. Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. It starts at two o'clock exactly. Thank you, Dr. Baloi. Thank you, Ms. Makhamati. Thank you, Jefferson. The meeting is adjourned.